the characteristics of life. There are five basic requirements of life, water, food, oxygen, heat, and pressure. Water, it's so important to us. Without it, we die. We can only go without water for about three or four or five days, then and our body is made up of 60% water. Bottoms up. Food is so important, especially for the production of ATP. I'm so glad Asia made this cake. Mmm, <laughs> oh, it's so good. <laughs> Now, oxygen is also very important. It's unbelievably important. And you need that, of course, for cell respiration. Well, in order to get it to your cells, you have to breathe it in through your lungs. Uh, your blood uh, comes to your lungs and then uh, picks up your oxygen and carries it to your cells, transport it to your cells. Our body generates heat. Pressure. Without it, I wouldn't be able to drink this soda using the straw. And the pressure within our chest cavity, it allows our lungs to take in oxygen. Actually, the lungs don't do the breathing. It's actually the diaphragm that creates the pressure changes, inflating and deflating the lungs. Pretty cool, huh? Life science, biology, if we can break up that word, bio, means life and ology means the study of. So when we have geology, geo meaning the earth or ground, ology is the study of. So geology is the study of the earth, while biology, bio meaning life, is the study of life. With cell organization you have the cell theory, which uh, basically uh, there were two men, Schleden and Schwann, they came up with these ideas uh, of cells and cells come from pre-existing cells. So a cell just can't spontaneously come about from nothing, but cells have to come from other cells. So one cell may divide into two cells, but those two cells came from an original cell. And then cells consist of atoms and molecules. And this is going to be very important as we look at the structure of uh, organization, the levels of organization, atoms, then make up molecules or compounds. Molecules, compounds will then form a larger group called a macromolecule, then they form organelles. And when we get to the cell unit, we're going to be talking about all the little organelles, like the baby organs of a cell, just like our body has organs. Well, a cell has organs and we call them organelles. Many organelles with different functions form a cell. So I might have my organ, the stomach, the stomach digests protein. That's its function. My small intestine also has a function. In that same way, I have many different organs with different functions. Organelles have different functions within the cell. We separate a prokaryote from a eukaryote is because a prokaryote cell does not have a membrane bound organelle. They don't have organelles, uh, even though they're considered living. They uh, don't have a nucleus, so their DNA is just kind of all um, uh, randomly shuffled within the cell. So there's no organelle or nucleus in prokaryote bacterial cells. Now bacteria have recently uh, been divided into eubacteria and archaeobacteria. Eukaryote cells, however, do have membrane-bound organelles, specifically a nucleus. So examples of eukaryotic cells are protists, fungi, plants, and animals. The second characteristic of life is responsiveness. Responsiveness could also be described as movement. Maybe the animal uh, the living organism is going to respond to a physical stimuli such as touch or maybe uh, some sort of uh, stimuli outside of the body or inside the body. Maybe a light, sound. The 
So if someone's poking you, you're going to respond. You're going to move away from it. An example of one type of responsiveness is homeostasis. If it's really cold outside, you're going to try and create a balance or a steady state of your environment. You want to keep your body temperature normal. You're going to put on a jacket. So that is homeostasis. Temperature is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. I am warm-blooded. I'm an endotherm. So what I'm going to do is when I'm cold, to keep that body temperature the same, as my body temperature starts to get, drop, I get colder, I want to put on a coat. I want to keep my body warm and uh, I want to keep that body temperature the same so that's homeostasis. Okay, oh, I'm wearing the sweatshirt and it is just so hot and I am just sweating like crazy. Now, that's another form of homeostasis. When it gets too hot, my body's going to try and release heat and uh, sweating is a way in which it can do that. Whew. It is hot. <sighs> now number three is reproduction. There are two types of reproduction uh, in which a living organism is going to make another living organism. There's asexual reproduction and that means you do not need a mate. Um, the bacterial cell will go through something called either binary fission or budding. Binary fission is an equal splitting. One bacteria will split into two bacteria. That's binary fission. Okay, remember fusion is two coming one. You're fusing together. So binary fission is the opposite of fusing, okay, which means gluing together. Binary fission is the opposite of that. So binary fission is making two, okay? That is a form of asexual. The other one I was talking about, budding, that is an uneven splitting. So uh, maybe uh, you have a little head coming out or a little bump coming out of the original and that's going to be uneven. The second type of reproduction is sexual and that's where you have a male and a female. Um, you have the egg and you have the sperm. Um, in the case of a flower, the pollen is the male gamete, like the sperm, the pollen is the male, and then you have the ovules, the little eggs, which are the female. So we have asexual reproduction, you don't need a mate, and then you have sexual, in which you are having a male and female. So there is no male and female bacteria. Okay, so binary fission is when one organism starts to split in half evenly. And as it starts to split, it's going to be making two of the same exact organism. Hey, now you have two Mr. Bs. Reproduction passes on different traits, characteristics, different features. Uh, biological growth involves either an increase of the cell, the size of the cell, or the increase in the number of cells, okay? Or it can be both. So an increase in the size, or an increase in number. That would be both of these considered growth. Energy. We talked at the beginning of the presentation that for the body needs food to have energy production. An energy molecule specifically is called ATP and you'll learn about that when we learn about cells. ATP means adenosine triphosphate Tri meaning three, so three phosphates, and you'll learn that later. Uh, many animals are heterotrophs, meaning they eat other things to get their energy. So a herbivore, a carnivore are both heterotrophs. They have to eat other things. Number six, excretion. Another characteristic of life, something is going to eat food, well, it has to then excrete out a waste. Um, this could be sweat, urine, feces, which is poop, and then death. 
all living things die. So if they're born, if they are living, they will soon die. Okay, so minerals, rocks do not have characteristics of life, so they do not die. Uh, viruses technically are not considered living, even though some scientists debate on that. So when a virus injects its DNA inside uh, your body, that virus then would be considered non-functional, not really dead, because it was never really alive. Okay, so the challenge here is, um, since you know we die, we all die, what's going to happen to us when we die? 